have a very robust model where we can change the moratorium period we can change the frequency of payment we can change the interest rate we can change the loan amount and instantly we will get the resultant calculations hello everyone welcome to the channel simplified in today's video i am going to cover some of the more advanced modeling techniques we will learn how to construct nested if function and also how to use ifs ifs function we will also briefly touch upon and function we will be using all of these in the process of enhancing the loan repayment schedule from our last video to make it more flexible if you are not sure how to build a repayment schedule from scratch you can check out that video first and then come back to this i have given the link in the description This repayment schedule which we built in the last video was good enough for comparing scenarios with different loan amounts or interest rates. However, it couldn't handle a moratorium period or changes to the repayment duration, payment frequency or a floating interest rate scheme. We will make some changes to this model so that these issues can be addressed. This model was built for 10 years and because we assumed monthly payment, we multiplied it by 12. but if we want to give the user the option to change this we better add a new option for that i'll call this frequency here i will need to enter the number of times i'm making payment in each year and this can be the number of years and i will add a new cell for the total number of payments So if it's a monthly payment the frequency will be 12 and I can get the number of payments here by multiplying this with this. Now in the installment formula the n per or the number of payment was linked to this so I will drag it and change the linking to this cell. I can now go ahead and delete this. And for the interest rate calculation as well earlier we had divided it by 12 as default. Now instead we will divide it by the frequency here. So now when I change the frequency to 4, let's say it is quarterly payment, the interest rate as well as the number of payments will automatically change. Now I'll check for a sample of 5 years with quarterly payment. So the number of payments become 5 into 4 20. And if I scroll down, you can see that after the 20th installment, the outstanding amount has become zero. But even after that, the installment amount continues to be paid or accounted for and as a result the outstanding amount is becoming negative so this is incorrect so to avoid this so we can use if conditions and build a rule that if the outstanding amount becomes zero then the installment need not continue any longer so first let's logically formulate these rules if the outstanding loan amount is zero or anything less than zero i don't have to make any payment at all so the installment or the payment here should become zero if the amount is greater than the installment amount that is the 67216 then the entire installment amount payment has to continue but if the outstanding amount is something between zero and 67216 then only whatever the outstanding amount is there that needs to be paid for example if we are left with 10000 here we don't have to pay the full installment amount instead we will have to pay only 10000 So if there was only a single condition with two possible outcomes we could have used an if function but here there are three different scenarios or three different outcomes and as a result we can't just use a single if function we will need to use a nested if function nested if basically means to use if within an if function we will start with that So here we will replace this formula instead and start by typing is equal to if open bracket and we will try to type in the condition. So if this amount is less than or equal to 0 so this is the condition I am checking for the outstanding amount and if the outstanding amount is less than or equal to 0 after comma I need the value if this condition is true that is nothing but 0 and once again comma Now I need to enter what needs to be done if the condition is not met that is if it is not less than or equal to 0 now here again there are two possibilities either it could be an amount greater than the installment amount or it could be an amount less than the installment amount so in order to meet these two conditions as well we will once again have to enter if 
and then perform the conditional check again i'll have to check whether if this is greater than the installment amount so i will select this so if it is either greater or equal to the installment amount then if this condition is met the output has to be the installment amount itself so i will select this again after the comma so this is the test that needs to be checked and if it passes the test this is the output that i get if it doesn't pass the test that means this amount will now be less than the installment amount if it is less than the installment amount whatever is the outstanding amount that needs to be paid so i will select this cell here where we get the outstanding amount now i need to close the bracket twice once to close this if function and once more to close this if function after this i can enter now sometimes you may forget to enter the brackets twice and let's say you just hit the enter as it is excel will generally come up with a pop up so it will fix it on its own so you just can click on yes and that will get accepted so if you see the two brackets have come up now any reference that we make within this table need not be frozen because generally when we drag the formula down the reference also needs to change but wherever we have referred outside this table that is any data here if we have referred to we will need to freeze that so for example e6 here needs to be frozen so we will need to add dollar symbol so i'll just press the shortcut here f4 f4 and that is sorted now i can copy paste this in the entire column now you can see that once the zero has come over here the installment amount doesn't appear anymore and hence the number doesn't go into negative now we can just test to see whether if it's working properly so i'll just enter 5000 over here you can see that if the outstanding amount is 5000 the repayment is also only 5000 and finally we are left with zero but if we have 80000 here then since it's more than the installment amount the installment gets paid and then the remaining amount comes here so this was one way to do it using the if function another way to do it is the ifs function the syntax here is actually simpler so i will type ifs open bracket and here too i have to check for the condition okay i have to perform the test so if this is less than or equal to zero then i need the output what i need if this condition is met so that will be zero if it's less if the outstanding amount is less than zero i need zero comma i need to perform the next test so i can just check whether if this amount is greater than the installment amount then i need the installment amount itself then i can perform the third test the third test is whether if this amount is less than the installment amount then i need the this amount itself as the output so the syntax here is test one and the output for the first test test two the output for the second test test three and the output for the third test and so on so we can have as many tests or conditions as we want in a single string so this is a little more simpler to construct here too i'll proceed by freezing the references whatever comes outside this table so f4 over here f4 over here and here and then we are good to copy paste it in the entire column while this is simpler there is one thing that you need to be aware of the way we have constructed this function there is a small error for example here we have mentioned g10 is less than e6 less than e6 would mean less than 67000 which is actually overlapping with the first condition because if you take a value like minus 10 it will be less than 0 also and it will be less than 67000 also in such cases, what Excel will do is it will follow the first condition. So when you enter the conditions like this, you have to see to it that there is no overlap. We shouldn't just be looking for this value to be less than 67,000. We need to check whether if it is between 0 and 67,000. So ideally, there needs to be two conditions. It should be that this is greater than 0 as well as less than the installment amount. So when you have to perform two conditional checks in a single test okay i will need to enclose it with an and function i'll open bracket here and close bracket here 
So this condition and this condition are combined using an AND function. And now in a single test, it will perform both these checks. So if you click here, it will highlight this part as in we are in the logical test three section of the formula. So this entire thing comes in the third check or the third test. And this is the value that I will get as the output. So now the way we have built it, there is no overlap and this is good to be copy pasted throughout. Now let's say I want uh, to check for weekly payments. So I will enter the frequency as 52 and let's say for 15 years. And when I scroll to the bottom, you can see that the loan amount is not getting over here because we built the model only up to 120 installments. But as of now, we have 780 installments if this loan needs to get over. So the solution here is to have more number of rows with these formulas. Excel has about 10,48,000 rows, but it would be unwise to copy paste all the way to the bottom because that would significantly slow down the Excel file. So a better way to deal with it is to estimate what might be the maximum likelihood of rows that you need. So let's say weekly payment with 52 installments per year and a maximum of 25 years is what you anticipate. So number of payments is 1300. So 1300 is most likely all that you need. I will also make a note here. Now let's also try to accommodate for moratorium period. Moratorium refers to the initial period in a loan where you don't have to pay the principal. You just have to pay interest during this time. It's common for a home loan where during the time of construction, they will only charge the interest. And once the construction is completed and you move in, you start paying the principal as well. Or it could also be for an education loan where while you're studying, you only have to pay the interest. And once your studies are over and you get a job, the principal payment starts. So let's assume moratorium is for two years. Again, I will create a provision for entering moratorium. Let's say two years. Okay, so I have a moratorium of two years or 24 payments. So ideally, during the first 24 months, I shouldn't be paying the entire installment amount. I should only be paying this interest portion. And from the 25th month onwards, the installment should start. So here again, I can use the if condition. So I will enclose the entire thing in an if function. So I will start with if open bracket. So I could use this column as a reference. So if the period here is less than or equal to this cell, then I need only the interest as the payment amount. So I put a comma. If not, value false, this entire section just plays out. So whatever all the conditions that we did earlier, that will come into effect only if it is more than 24. Okay, I did not freeze the reference here. E7, I will add the dollar symbol. Let's say the moratorium period is for 18 months. So that will be one and a half years. I'll put 1.5 here. And then you can see from the 19th month onwards, the payment is starting. Okay, so the moratorium part is also taken care. So now we will move on to add the option for floating interest rate. So in the original table that we created, all the interest was linked to this cell itself. But if it's a floating interest rate, the interest could vary each of the payment period. So to add that data, I will add a new column. So I'm going to enter 12% here, which is the yearly interest rate. And let's say the interest rate goes down to 10%. So I will have the flexibility to change it throughout. Now, when I calculate the interest here, I shouldn't be linking it to this. Instead, I should link it to this. But this is the yearly rate. So I will divide it by the payment frequency. I'll also freeze this. So and, and this need not be frozen. So I will remove the dollar symbols. Okay, so now this is getting linked to this and this is getting linked to this. So now we have the flexibility to change the interest rate for each of the payment period. Typically, when you take a loan, EMI will be originally calculated based on the prevailing rate of interest at the time when they are disbursing the loan. So this EMI calculation, we will keep it linked to this. 
but what changes is that the interest that get accrued for that particular period will change so we are not changing the emi calculation but i will link this to this so whenever i change one value all the subsequent values will also change so originally when it was only 12 percentage this was getting over by the 138th installment but if i increase the interest let's say to 12.5 percent here and 13 percent here now the loan is getting repaid only in 149th installment so there were almost 11 extra installments that you have to pay now because the interest rate went up we will also have to change this calculation Earlier we took the total payment to be just multiplication of the installment amount and the tenure. But if it's a floating interest rate scheme, your tenure need not be fixed. It could go up or down. So a better way to calculate this total payment is just to take a sum of all the repayment amount. So I will just sum this entire column. And the interest would be the difference between this and this. I could also just sum up the interest column as well. So that would also give the same answer. Now we have a very robust model where we can change the moratorium period, we can change the frequency of payment, we can change the interest rate, we can change the loan amount and instantly we will get the resultant calculations. I would also like to highlight that the actual process of modeling involves multiple iterations like this. You generally start with a simple model and slowly you keep adding one new feature at a time. You can't start off this cell directly by incorporating all these conditions. And in this process, you may end up rewriting and changing a lot of things what you created first. But that is the way it is supposed to be. I hope this video has been helpful to you and if so, please hit the like and subscribe button for more content. See you in the next video.